Hello, old school April is upon us and I'm Dr. J, retired demon hunter and knower of things. Welcome to the Office of Demonology. Let's jump right in to what books I'm planning on reading for old school April. First up is Live Girls. I've already started reading this. This is great. It's set in 1980s, late 1980s, in New York's Times Square, which was a really seedy place to be back then. Live nude girls, which is what we have here, the live girls is talking about that. But it's a vampire story. Very racy. Uh, if you want something raunchy, then a great book to pick up. I'm loving it. It's by Ray Garten. I've never read anything by Ray Garten. So this actually hits a lot of things on the list for Old School April. I believe one is, well, this is published be before 2005. Um, there's something about romance or, let, let's get my list. If you don't know what Old School April, I think it is Slime and Slashers. I'll put the link in the show notes. This is something that happens every April. I haven't done it before, this is my first time. And so I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can read. So Live Girls by Ray Garten. Let's see on this list that they provide for you for Old School April, uh, what does this book hit on the checked off list here? So read a book over 300 pages, this book is over 300. Read a book published before 2005, definitely published before 2005. Now I also put this as um, let's see where the other one is. Read a romance, a smut book, or a saucy book. This is definitely a smut book, and it's a vampire book, but it's definitely smutty. So it hits that. I think there might be some other ones. Let me see. Oh, well, read a used or borrowed book. That's pretty much every book I get, because I always go to the thrift store to buy books. I don't buy new much. Read a new to you author or genre. So this is a new to me author. So that book hits a ton already. What else do I got? Ah, Robert A. Heinlein, Podcain of Mars. Now I have never read anything by Heinlein, but on the Writing Fiction Podcast, Regina and I did his five rules of writing, and you can listen to that. We did a rule each week. It's great if you're a writer and you wanna learn more about how he views writing for submission. Great episodes, definitely listen to that. Also, if you're interested in writing, you could jump on to my newsletter, the link's in the show notes. There's one free post every Sunday, but every other post is a subscribed post. You pay $8 a month at least. Uh, you can subscribe for the whole year if you want. And I will be posting writing prompts. I will be posting articles that I wanna talk about when it comes to the, write, the craft of writing, as well as things to inspire you to get started writing and keep writing. So check that out in the show notes, my newsletter, and that will help support not only the podcast, but this YouTube channel and my writing. This one, I believe it says read a sci-fi book. So let's find that here. Yeah, read a sci-fi book with science elements. So that will be this book here. And then I found this. Now a friend told me about this author a while ago, Kim Harrison's Dead Witch Walking. This I found at the thrift store. It is in mint condition. Look at that. Oh my God, no, the spine's perfect. Uh, I love this cover. I don't know who did the artwork. Don't think we give the artist of books enough credit. Some of the stuff is just great. Let's see if it tells you who the cover artist is. I don't see it. Anyway, Kim Harrison. Now this hits a book with magic, magical elements, items, or witches. So that's this book here, Dead Witch Walking. Hey, if you read any of these books, let me know in the comments. I heard great things about this book, so I'm looking forward to it. It also hits a book written by a woman, Kim Harrison. This book, Midnight Horror Show. Now this one I picked up I believe this is self-published. Usually you can tell, I don't know what it is about the covers, but they, the ones that are self-published have different covers and they feel, it feels very obvious to me that it's self-published because of that. Um, nothing wrong with that. I just feel like the paper used on self-published covers feel much different than if you bought it in Barnes & Noble. Also, this looks like it was signed by the author. Very excited about that. 
I don't know anything about this author, so that also fits the read a book you haven't read by someone else before. I haven't read Kim Harrison before either, so most of these, and these are all used, so I'm hitting all these things with these books. But the reason why I picked this one up is because it's set in October 1985, which is read a book set in the 80s or 90s or a book with a nostalgic vibe. So Midnight Horror Show, I'm looking forward to this one as well. Plus, I love the idea of the drive-in movie. Big fan of that. Now, there is a section here that says, let me find it. I highlighted these so I could easily find it and I can't. Is it here? Next, The Cheater by R.L. Stein. It's a Fear Street book. I literally just finished this before I pressed record. I have some issues with this book but I enjoyed it. Such an easy read. You can blow through Fear Street books like nothing. Great cover art again. This cover art is by, because I know I saw it in here. The cover art is by Bill Schmidt. Story revolves around a girl whose father is really pushing her to do well on her math SAT so she can get into Princeton. This guy's a judge. He's not a, I honestly don't like the guy. And at the end, he sort of redeems himself. Like, I'm sorry I pushed you so hard. But she needs to make at least a score over 700 to make her dad proud. She makes a deal with this dude. He said, hey, look, I'll pass it for you and you go out on a date with me. She already has a boyfriend. So I like the fact that Cheater is not only because she's cheating on her boyfriend, but she cheated on the math test. It's really kind of clever. And then it seems like a great idea, a simple plan, and everything goes to hell. I enjoyed it. I won't say I didn't enjoy it, but I'll explain maybe in a future video of what bothered me about it. But that actually hits read a middle grade or YA book and then there's another one that says read a Fear Street or Chris Pike or Point Horror book. So that hits the Fear Street book too. I don't have it because I'm, I know it's here. I just can't find it in my crazy books. I'm pretty organized, but I can't find my Goosebumps book. And it's the slappy one. It's somewhere around here, but that's on my list to hit read a Goosebumps book. All right, read a nostalgic magazine. I already went through this and read some of this. This is this is Super 8 Filmmaker. This is from 1975. I have a collection of these books. It's really cool. It has like all these different tips on shooting film with Super 8 back in 1975. This is something you can pick up on eBay if you want to shoot Super 8 and you want to kind of get some tips and tricks how to shoot as if you were living in 1975 because a lot of the stuff that are tips here don't matter as much because we have computers that can do all this stuff. You could shoot on Super 8, bring that onto the computer, and then use After Effects or Final Cut Pro and do all the other special effects stuff that they teach you in here that you couldn't do back in 75. But that checks off Read a Nostalgic Magazine. I wish I hadn't read Carney already by R. St. Clair because there's a section here that says read a book uh, featuring a clown or a carnival. That would have been perfect for old school April. Now there is something here that says read something that has music or musical elements. This is an old school book if I've ever seen one. It's called Backwards Masking Unmasked. Backward Satanic Messages of Rock and Roll Exposed. This was written by some Jesus freak and his name is Jacob Aranza, and he is one of the outstanding young ministers of America. And if you don't know anything about backwards masking, back in the day, this book was written in the 80s, because there's a section here that, oh, it's super homophobic too, like this guy, Queen, a group whose name is often used in slang to mean homosexual. He's always like attacking the homosexuals in this book. And so I really enjoy this because back in the 80s, there was the Satanic Panic, and that's when this book was released. He talks about Olivia Newton-John putting pornography to music with her song, Physical. This, to me, should be in the humor section. I think it's hilarious. Uh, but this was the mindset in the 80s 
when it came to the satanic panic. You know, Dungeons and Dragons was evil, your music was evil. And I forgot to bring up, backwards masking is when you play a record and you spin it backwards, you hear satanic messages. So Led Zeppelin was accused of this, Beatles definitely, and the Beatles really weren't putting satanic things in there, but they had it where like Paul is dead, we miss him, we miss him, like things like that if you play the music backwards. You can find examples of this on YouTube because back in the day when I was a kid, I'd had to put the record on the turntable and play it backwards and you have to try to keep a constant speed and be like and it was hard to tell what was being said, but now people easily can reverse audio and you can hear these things on YouTube. So check those out if you want to hear backwards masking. But this actually fits the music or musical elements and also read a nonfiction book. But I will be reading, I don't know if it's a nonfiction book by itself. Let me see. Yeah, read a nonfiction book. And then there's read a book about writers or writing. If you're not aware, that's, I read tons of books on the craft of writing. So I don't know which one this month I'm reading because I just, which one am I reading right now? Oh, is it here? The book I'm currently reading on writing is called Self-Editing for Fiction Writers. I'm, in, I'm really enjoying that book and I'll probably do a video on that in the future, but that will be also checked off for Old School April. I hope I can actually get all these books read. I'm not sure if I will be able to, but it is my goal. I might do a video on The Cheater because this is the first Fear Street book I've read. When my son was very young, we read a lot of Goosebumps books together. So I know those books. I never read Fear Street. And I'm not sure how I feel about them. Would I buy another Fear Street book? I don't know. Probably not. Only because the writing is so simple. And I get it. It's for kids. Young adults. But I don't know. We'll have to talk more about that in a future video. So there you have it. The books I am planning on reading for Old School April. I will be doing this all month. I will be talking about these books. If you like this sort of content, hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll be back soon. Like tubular. Well, it's like a totally great day. It's like totally awesome. Gag me with a spoon.